Hi, my name is Demare. I'm the gentleman or the manipulator, and my forte is hand magic manipulating, and my specialty is birds. Hello, my name is Philip Escoffi. I'm the mentalist in the show, and I deal with this area of psychics, telepathy, mind reading, and ask the question of the audience whether the claims that these people make are for real or not. Two seasoned magicians, two different types of magic. Both picked it up for the attention, but one to show off and the other to defend himself. In Singapore, as part of magic show The Illusionist, James and Philip revealed that their beginnings with magic couldn't be more different. One of them was a victim of school bullies. I think two people come to magic one of two ways: they're either very shy, and the magic tricks helps. Their confidence—it's—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's not just you. Look, I can show you something interesting. I wasn't from that um, school. I was from the show-off school. I liked the attention it got me, and, and whereas most of my friends sort of let it disappear after a few years, they got bored. It, it grew. I went off to university and got my degree, but I carried on with my interest. I was a runt, you know, very tiny, always getting my butt kicked, you know. Um, always liked attention. Yeah, poor me. Oh, it's a sad, sad tale. <laughs> Can I a little cuff lamp? Yes. Um, so I, I saw I saw two magicians. I saw Doug Henning, who had long hair and overalls, and I had really long hair. And I went, well, there's a cool thing. And I saw an old timer, Blackstone Senior, and something clicked in my head. And I started trying to discover how to learn magic. And I would read biographies on magicians and figure out how I would do it. And as I started doing magic, now. Even though the bullies were still picking on me, I was getting more attention than them, and it didn't matter if they were hammering on me. And then I started dating their girlfriends, and so it was more of an attention thing at the beginning. Like I was raised by a single parent, so I think a lot of entertainers we start because we're broken a little bit, and it's an attention thing. But I think when you adjust that, and when you when you kind of heal, if you do, a lot of entertainers don't. Now you start doing it for them, for the audience. Though they went into the magic business for different reasons. Both James and Philip enjoy substantial success over the years. In his career of over 35 years, James Dumer created for himself an image of the gentleman, channeling Fred Astaire, combining his magic performance with a little bit of dancing and acting. Starting small in Canadian nightclubs and cabarets back in the 1970s, James has since brought his shows to bigger stages in many countries. Meanwhile, in England. Philip Escoffi styled himself as the grey man, someone who allows onlookers to be comfortable and natural, as if he were not there, so he could read their minds. The mind reader, who speaks eloquently in rapid-fire fashion, has been in the business for over ten years. He is famous for his show Impossible, which he wrote for British television, and two other shows called Six Impossible Things Before Dinner and Six More Impossible Things Before Dinner. Even their choices of inspiration are different. For me, with the the style of performance that I do, my inspiration is being with people. Um, I try and rather just do tricks that make people go, "Oh, how did he do that?" I want it to have a relevance and a poignance to them as well. So my inspiration can come from sitting waiting in an airport and watching the world go by, and I love to do that. Some people like looking under a car bonnet and working out how an engine works. I can sit in an airport for hours and just watch the world go by. When I was coming here, I was sitting in the airport in London, and there was a guy who just had sellotape wrapped around his shoe. He's obviously fallen apart, and my mind will start to why? Why has that man got? How did that happen? What's What's the bit that I didn't see in the last two weeks, two days, two hours that means that that man is walking around with sellotape on his shoe? And there's a reason we are we are creatures of habit. It's not always predictable, but we are naturally inclined towards move. We, we move towards things that make us feel comfortable, and we move away from things that make us feel uncomfortable. And my job is to predict that and influence that. <laughs> come on, come on! Uh, <laughs> I'll set him up. You punch him in. Uh. Uh, well, lately, let's say lately, last 20 years, I'll hear a piece of music, and I'll know I want to use that piece of music, but I can't, and it just buzzes around my head, buzzes around, buzzes around my head. Or I'll see a piece of magic, and and for me, it's usually a piece that someone's discarded. It's an old classic, and it never quite was there, or it was there, and it got so overdone that no one wants to do it anymore. And then all of a sudden, one, and it it could be just um, someone once told me is when you're 
talking with someone or you're in a group of people, really listen. Because that's the one time your brain is free, and what they're concentrating, what they're focusing on, they have all your attention. And when that happens, one of you will get divine inspiration. Having 45 years of experience in between them, it's hard to imagine they would do anything else. But they have clearly thought about a parallel universe where they would be. Well, when this all happened at 13, when my brain went ding, I was either going to be an architect, an oceanographer, a stand-up comedian, or I was going to play in a rock and roll band. You know, because I was already doing stand-up comedy, I was already lighting bands, learning guitar. I I could draw, but I understood stuff. I was already designing my own house. You did stand-up comedy. Yeah, surprisingly. How did that go? Well, you know, not a lot of laughs. <laughs> I think talk show radio host. You've got a the talk show host, and people phone in, and they might be discussing the school system one day, or they might discuss what your beliefs on astrology are. Well, James and Philip might make excellent stand-up comedian and show host, but for now, we are glad they are still magicians. Catch the Illusionists for yourself, which is showing at the Sands Theatre till the fourth of March.